Welcome back. Today we are going to be answering your mental health questions. And by we, I mean a licensed clinical social worker because your girl is not qualified for that. All of the questions that we're going to answer in today's video were submitted by you, the teens of Fairfax County. Before we jump into answering your questions, I just want to give a disclaimer that this video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not a suitable substitute for one-on-one -on -one counseling or for mental health support that you may find in your community. With that said, I'm going to turn the video over to our expert. My name is Maria Inez Butler. I'm a licensed clinical social worker in Virginia. I'm the owner and therapist at Thrive Therapy Center, a private practice in Fairfax, Virginia. I love working with teenagers because um, I love that con connecting with them therapeutically and answering questions they might have and supporting them in such a, you know, such an interesting period of, of their time um, where they can really benefit from from some support uh, from a professional like myself, but also. Uh, gaining tools and, and resources that they can use throughout their life. So the first question that we have is the following. Why are there times when we feel sad all of a sudden for a short period of time and for no specific reasons? I think that's a really good question. I think feelings are an interesting thing. And whenever we notice that feelings come up seemingly from nowhere, what I typically invite clients to do is to be curious about where those feelings might be coming from, if there's anything that triggered the feelings, um, and to be really curious. Um, and then if there are feelings that, for example, um, are coming up that might feel a little bit uncomfortable, like sadness or worry, what we can do is really find ways to, um, you know, soothe or cope, whether that's, um, you know, with belly breaths or, um, you know, engaging in activities that we might like, such as, um, you know, drawing or coloring or reaching out to friends and our support system. So I think being curious if we notice feelings coming up out of nowhere, um, looking at me, you know, maybe what happened right before that feeling arrived might be a good way to figure out where that's coming from. The next question that we have is, what should you do when someone you know and love commits suicide? You know, having someone that we love and know die from suicide might be a really confusing time for some of us. We may not know why somebody made such a decision. Um, we may be confused as to why someone was feeling so sad that they would take their own life and why that person didn't reach out for you know, support. And those are all really good questions. What I encourage clients to do when someone um, that they die, that they love dies by suicide is to reach out for support to talk with, about it with you know, friends or loved ones. Um, there's also a great resource, the National Suicide Hotline that they can call and talk to, you know, train people that can really talk with them through um, you know, the experience of having someone die by suicide because it, oftentimes it is something that can be quite confusing and, and filled with, you know, with grief. But you're not alone in that. I think oftentimes it does lead to a lot of confusion and not really understanding why someone would make such a decision. The next question is, sometimes I repeat things in my head when I'm nervous or sad or worried. I repeat things in my head. Like for instance, I hate my mom. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I wish, um, I wish, I wish was an Oscar Mayer wiener. Sometimes in my mind, I feel like hurting something, but I never do. You know, our brains are wired uh, to try to, you know, to try to help make sense of the world for us and to help us cope with feelings of sadness and worry. Um, you know, finding, I think, a helpful phrase to maybe um, replace some of that, rep you know, repetitive phrasing might be helpful. Uh, maybe something like, you know, I'm feeling worried, but I can calm myself, I can take deep breaths. Um, you know, kind of a phrase that you have in your back pocket that you can pull out at that time. 
uh, might be helpful, something that you find calming or something that you find reassuring about your own ability to calm yourself or to cope with your feelings. Um, if, but if you're ever feeling like you're going to hurt something or hurt yourself or someone else, I really encourage you to talk to a trusted adult, whether that's a parent or um, a neighbor or a teacher or a school social worker. Um, you know, because there is help out there if you're ever feeling like you um, are going to hurt something, someone, or yourself. The next question is, sometimes I feel very self-conscious about my weight. The truth is that I'm really already underweight. What can I do to get past my self-consciousness? You know, struggling with body image is not in common during the teenage years, and even for adults, it's something that some adults struggle with. You know, we're constantly bombarded with images in the media about what our bodies should look like or should not look like. Um, and what I find is that focusing on things that we do like about ourselves can be really powerful. Um, a little trick that I like to do is I like to encourage clients that are struggling with body image to take an opportunity each day to look at themselves in the mirror and to pick one thing that they really like about themselves and to, you know, to share that with themselves, to say, I really like, you know, my eyes or I really like, you know, any part of their body. And that can be a really powerful experience of seeing how, um, you know, words can really have an impactful um, way of maybe changing how we see our, ourselves. Um, but if you're really worried about your under, you know, being underweight or you're really struggling in a really significant way, I also encourage you to talk to a trusted adult, maybe a parent that can talk with your pediatrician to see if maybe working in, with a nutritionist would be helpful or even seeing a therapist that specializes in body image issues or maybe eating disorders. Um, you know, but that I think um, that is something that you know, it's not uncommon to struggle with, you know, that body image issues. And again, it is related oftentimes to the media and how we're constantly bombarded with ways that we should or shouldn't look. The next question we have says, I feel like after the pandemic, my social skills will be so bad. I feel like I will be so awkward around people and my friends. I don't know what to do. I love this question. I think we can all relate to that. You know, you're not alone in feeling this way. The pandemic has really gotten in the way of, of how we've socialized in the past. It's gotten in the way of how we have routinely interacted with people that we love and our friends. Um, and I wanna encourage you to find creative ways to still interact with friends and loved ones. Just because there is the pandemic going on, it doesn't mean that we should be completely isolating and that we shouldn't be having contact with, you know, with those around us. There's great ways that we can socialize in a safe way, whether that's by video, kind of like what we're doing, you know, now, um, you know, by, I know some of my clients are doing video games where they can put their headphones, headsets and interact with their friends in that way. Um, there's also ways to interact in a safe social distance. So maybe going for a walk with a friend, um, you know, but I really encourage you to stay connected with those people that you care and love, because even if there is the pandemic going on, if we completely isolate ourselves, that can lead to things like, you know, depression or anxiety. So it's really important to connect with those people that we love and care about, even if it means that we're doing it in a different way than we have in the past. The next question reads, is not being affected by triggering or sensitive subjects strange? You know, when it comes to this thing, we um, are all, we all have different sensitivities to different subjects, and it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. Um, it might mean that you're just impacted differently than, say, a parent or a friend. Um, and it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. It just means that you're different and that um, that's not a bad thing. We're all different and unique, and that's what makes us special. The next question reads, what do I do if I was never tested for ADD as a child and I have severe symptoms now? 
the good thing about ADD testing is that it's not only available to kids, but it's also available to teenagers and even adults. I even know some grown-ups that get tested. So if you're really wondering if you know, you have ADD or you experience really significant symptoms, you may have a trusted adult um, see if they can set up some testing for you if you are experiencing some really significant symptoms. Again, talking to a trusted adult might be a good idea. Um, or even seeing a therapist that can help you get some tools around how to manage the symptoms. And remember, sometimes ADD can look a little bit like anxiety. And if you're experiencing, you know, because of the pandemic, some anxiety, it might be that, that, it's, that you are trying to cope with that anxiety and that it isn't necessarily ADD. So getting tested might be a really good next step to really get to the bottom of what the symptoms are really about. And again, you don't have to be a kid to get tested. You can be a teenager or even a, an adult. The next question we have is, is it normal to fight a lot with my boyfriend? We argue almost every day, but we love each other very much, so we don't want to break up. Okay. Um, so that's a great question. Arguing isn't necessarily a bad thing as long as you're doing it in a fair and not hurtful way. Finding ways to better communicate with each other might help decrease the arguing, arguing really listening to each other and what each other are trying, is trying to communicate, using our listening ears, I like to call them, and really listening to what your boyfriend is saying instead of trying to figure out what you're going to reply back or say back might help, but remember that it is never okay to have someone hurt us or be verbally abusive or physically abusive. If that is happening or that is the case, I encourage you to reach out to a trusted adult, um, whether that's a parent, a caregiver, a teacher, a school social worker, um, because it's never okay to have someone hurt us. The next question is, Sometimes I get very upset when bad things happen, like when I get a bad grade or when my friends are mad at me. My parents say I'm being dramatic and have nothing to complain about in my life. Is it normal to feel upset a lot or am I just a drama queen? You know, I can see why you would be upset if you get a bad grade or if a friend gets mad at you. You know, those are things that really matter to you and that's where you're feeling upset. I think it's normal to feel upset when bad things happen or when upsetting things happen, just like it's okay to feel happy when, you know, something joyful happens. I think oftentimes we associate certain feelings as being bad or dramatic and other feelings as being good, but the reality is that we're wired to feel all sorts of, you know, all sorts of feelings. And if bad things happen, of course you're going to be upset. You know, if your parents are maybe worried that you're getting too upset, I would encourage you to see if you can find some activities that are soothing to you, something that you enjoy to do when you're feeling really upset. And those might be things like listening to music or reaching out to friends. Um, you know, I have clients that love drawing or coloring. Um, so finding ways that you can soothe yourself might be a great tool to have in your back pocket if you're ever feeling really upset. The next question reads, my girlfriend broke up with me and I feel like I'm never going to be in love again. Like nobody could ever love me like she did. How do I get over this? That's a really great question. I think it's not uncommon to feel this way after breakup. I think that's true for teenagers, for adults. You know, breakups are hard and they make sense that it would be, they would be. Um, you know, it seems like you felt really loved by your girlfriend and that makes this breakup a big loss. What I would encourage you to, feel, to do is, um, you know, for you to look back at the relationship and maybe think about all the positive things that you can, you know, take out of that relationship and, and learn, right? Take that as a learning experience and take those, you know, positive things that you experience and then focus on how you can use them maybe, um, you know, for future relationships that you might find yourself in or even, you know, positive things that you enjoyed or learned about yourself. And, and you can use that as ways that you can even grow as an individual. Um, 
but I, but you're not alone in feeling really upset after a breakup. I think that's um, really common. And if you are feeling really upset, I would encourage you to reach out to resources such as, you know, your support system, friends, loved ones. The next question reads, I'm pretty sure I'm gay, but my parents say I'm just going through a phase. Is it possible that I could really be straight and just not know it yet? Is there a way to make yourself straight to make your parents happy? This was a really good question. It sounds like you really care about your parents and making them happy. What we know is that being gay is not a phase, but it is a part of who you are. You know, and it might be a surprising part that you didn't know about yourself, and it might take some time to, um, you know, process what that might mean for you. And the same with it, it might take some time for you to better understand yourself. It might take some time for your parents or loved ones to also understand this part of who you are. What I would encourage you to do is to reach out to the Trevor Project. They're really great because they um, can, you know, talk with you and help you find ways to better communicate with your parents around this. You can talk or chat with someone to find unconditional and judgment-free support. You know, navigating this on your own might feel a little bit daunting, but remember that there is support out there and that you're not alone in that. And in some ways, just like this is a new part of yourself that you're discovering, um, you know, it might be a part of yourself that initially you're not so sure about, but long-term it might be a part of you that you learn to really love and accept. Um, and that there's a lot of support out there um, for you to learn about this new part of you. And that's the video! As always, we have some books to recommend to you guys related to mental health and wellness. We also have a really great resource that has information about all kinds of topics that might impact your mental health. We provide links to local and national resources so that you can find safe, reliable information. Links to everything in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in our next video. Bye!